Good evening. Uh, it's quite late here in the uh, in Spain, but it's early morning in the Philippines. Well, it's morning time, breakfast time. So one thing I will say is, if you have any issues with the audio, just give us a shout um, because it should be okay. But we'll see how it goes because the internet here is absolutely crap. <laughs> anyway. Getting on to the subject, the subject today is why leave or retire in the Philippines? It was actually somebody asked me this, and could I do a topic on it? Well, the first thing is, I think you need to separate the different types of people that go to the Philippines. Uh, the first one is like younger people that are there to travel. Um, for them, it offers new experiences, doing something a little bit out of the ordinary, um, there's a lot of things to see. It's quite cheap to travel around. It's quite ex exciting and adventurous, but also everybody speaks English. So that, that makes it a little bit more interesting um, in the fact that it's, it's not too bad to travel around if, um, if you struggle with languages or whatever, because everybody, I, I've never met anybody who didn't speak some English. Um, the worst case scenario, I find people sometimes don't like speaking English, and they, it's what they call uh, they, what do they, um, it gives them a nosebleed. I think that's the term they use. Um, but yeah, if you're in that young generation, I'll say it's worth it for a bit of adventure, doing something new, doing something outside your comfort zone, because you'll take, get a lot from it from, as a person, because. I think the relationship to what poor means, for example, is very different between the Philippines um, and, say, the UK, where a lot of the issues in the UK are not around the fact that people are poor. It's often around drug addiction and other th issues um, because there's a lot of support mechanisms there where the Philippines doesn't have any. So, yeah, you do get a lot out of that. It does change your perspective on the world, makes you a bit more open-minded. Getting on a bit, the next group will probably be the, the 30 pluses. Um, I would say the Philippines, if you're looking to start your own businesses, it's much cheaper. Most of the people I know have started businesses out of cash, where I find in the UK, well, pretty much anywhere in the West, it's going to burn a big hole in your pocket. Now, the thing with the Philippines is you don't really need to spend as much. Okay, you're not going to get the same amount of rewards. You know, if you invested, say, half a million pounds in a restaurant in the UK, then obviously you're going to have a, a lot more weekly returns. But obviously you've got a lot to pay the bank. You're still going to probably have stuff on lease. You're going to have a lot more costs in running it. Oh, hi, Tim. Tim Rogers has joined us. How's it going? Um, so I'd say in the Philippines, it's much easier to start micro businesses and small businesses and build them up. Um, it's a bit like the apartment rentals here in La Mata. I'm sitting here going through the mathematics relating to return on investment for doing holiday rentals because I know there's a market for it. Um, and you're sitting there going, Ideally, you've got to get into this cash um, because as soon as you start involved with mortgages and everything else, first thing you got is ten percent tax. Then there's like all oh, the little bits of fees they sneak in there. <laughs> Tim Rogers says boring night shift at work. Well, I'm glad I'm, I'm here with you then. Keep you awake. Um, but yeah, the the thing is, there's all these extra people living off your back um, because. So much is controlled, like the um, real estate, the retail market in many countries. Uh, it's very difficult to get kickstarted. Even in the Philippines, you know, it's all the same owners of the same malls, you know, the same families. But at least you, there's a lot of small enterprises around as well. So it's very easy to get kickstarted and start small and grow it. The BPO industry, very easy to start small. Um, in the UK, I would have struggled to get the call center started in the same way we did in the Philippines. Um, I would have probably got the, the salespeople easier, 
it would have cost me a lot more money in the, the staffing. Um, uh, the facilities would have cost more. Um, but at the same time, would I get paid more out of the clients? The answer is no. Because I know down in Florida, they were getting $100. And okay, we were getting 80 per, per lead. But for $20 a lead difference, it's not that big. Um, not to justify the extra cost. I mean, the, the good thing about the guys in Florida, they're already geared up for it. So I'd say that's a good thing in your 30s is you can actually set up something in the Philippines and grow it quite easily. I'm not saying starting a business you have no idea about is easier there than anywhere else but, uh, because the reality is you've got to have the right mindset and go in with your eyes open. It's not something you just go, bang, oh, we can do that because I see a lot of guys fail um because a they don't research enough b they give it to their wife or a relative um in the philippines and it happens the same to overseas filipino workers uh because they invest in it and then the other people don't take the same level of commitment on the business as you would because it's your money when it's someone else's money they don't have that same as commitment They say, oh, it's my brother's business or whatever. They don't really commit to it in the same way. So that's something you'll be aware of. Uh, Tim Rogers says, how much is it good to start an initial sum for starting a business? It depends what you're doing. Um, I believe, well, I know this works. There's been other people bring it up as well after doing it, after I did it. Um, you can actually become sustainable with lots of little small things going on. Um, like the Sari Sari store doesn't make big money, but if you had the Sari Sari store, it'll bring money in to pay for your electric or whatever. Then you sit there, have the peso peso arcade machines, and then having um, a little bit of livestock, you know, you, you know, pigs, chickens, stuff that's easy to sell. Then it starts becoming very sustainable. And then you stick on your apartments or houses over a period of time then it can grow what, what you need to look at is how much do you need as a return on investment initially because if you want to hit the ground running and go right i'm going to move to the philippines going to start a business i'm going to put x out x in and i need this out that's when it becomes difficult everything i've done i have not needed the money out that, that's an important thing because I do have a set of skills I can utilize. Like, like now, um, I turned down a job this week um, in the UK because we got, we've got uh, to be somewhere next week. But um, the thing is, I still have regular flows of work coming in. Um, I've worked, worked uh, two days this week for one company. Somebody else contacted me yesterday about some other work for the next three months, part-time from home. Um, that's what I mean. If you've got steady flows of work, it's much, much easier. But if you're going to go there and say, I'm going to do this and that's all I'm going to do, that's where you can hit, hit some risks because the figures can often not add up. Um, what I mean is a Westerner spends a lot more than a Filipino does. There's no getting away from that. The average Filipino does not eat the way we do. Um, they don't have the same expenditure levels. So that needs to be factored in on any business. Um, because if you don't, that's where you could come unstuck. What you want to do is, uh, like David Salons, is he started off obviously with one or two salons and just rolled the model out. Once you got the model working, you get the franchisees going, you get more expanding businesses. But at the same time, on a small scale, doing the little service service store, doing the peso peso machines, doing the water machines, doing uh, mineral water and all this sort of stuff. Although it's replicated a lot of times in the Philippines, they all work. But the good thing as an expat is often we have the spare cash. So what happens is we have the ability to start this business without a loan. That puts us ahead of the game for a lot of people. Um, hi, Crusader. 2006 Crusader joins us. How's it going? Um, so, yeah, that's the 30 pluses. And then the next group, 
would have to be um, the retirees and retirees. I'd say the the thirty pluses and the retirees, where they're looking for a partner. Um, I'll be honest with you, I I'm re- I've been rarely single since I was well, I wasn't even single at school. So it's not a you know because there is a stigma where like oh maybe you you, you can't get a woman in your own country um no i wasn't i've never had that issue but the thing is i wanted a for me i wanted a i wasn't even looking for um somebody from the philippines either at the time but um (coughs) what happened is yeah i mean my wife knows it and previous exes know i would only marry once Um, i'm not religious but my commitment in a marriage is for permanent you know a permanent partner that's it my commitment's 110 percent. so for me i wasn't even looking for a partner but knowing how many people are a looking for a partner and visiting the philippines trying to find out a partner in the philippines currently with a partner or looking for a partner a lot of it is about having that other piece that completes a person which is having somebody else that they want to spend the rest of their life with and that's why a lot of other people go there um i have to say though it's sometimes a lot of people don't put the the right amount of effort in to the relationship from both sides i've met some filipinas that don't have any depth to them, but also don't seem to have any depth of interest in their partners. Um, I've met guys that have had the opposite. They're not really that interested in the woman. They're just, you know, they're companions, but they haven't really put that much effort into the relationship. And this is where things can go wrong and often do, because if the relationship is not a real relationship, it's superficial, it's monetary or security or whatever, then either be realistic with it or you need to try and make it worth more than that. Because there was something that was on about this recently about the cultures between the Asian cultures and the Western cultures. Um, that the fact that the guys and the women separate in the Philippines, you know, you go out for a night out, the guys do their thing, the women do their thing. And that's like, they're sort of living two separate ha- lives in the same house. But one thing I will say is how easy is it to get some of these women away from somebody with a long-term relationship with? It's extremely easy. And I'm not saying that because I'm boasting. I'm just saying it's a reality. Um, this says that that doesn't really work. It may suit people in a certain niche where that's what they have, but it doesn't mean that that's all they can have. You know, if they they get somebody take a bit of interest in them, then bang, they're, they're off. I've, I've seen women with kids and all sorts, like just go off with a foreigner just because they met them online. I've seen people when I had the internet calf, that I know are in relationships, they're married, they're whatever, they're still looking for guys online. Now, if that relationship was so great, they wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so I would say that traditional marriage thing of, well, in the Asian thing where they separate, I would say, I wouldn't say it's great. I would say for a guy, you know, going out with your drinking buddies and that, yeah, it's fine. But you've got to understand that if that's every night, Although nobody may say anything to you, you're like, well, I'm the bill pay or whatever. Doesn't mean people aren't thinking behind your back. It's um, <laughs> that's a reality. I've seen it happen. I've seen people lose businesses and all sorts, like just in the click of a finger, because while they've been doing whatever they want to do, and just like, well, she can like it or lump it. She's been sitting, she's been busy in the background. <laughs> she's made sure that she's she's covered her bases. When she exited, she took as much as she could. Um, so I would say that that's a good third group, which is the older guys. Now, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I think the relationship, um, a lot of guys see they've got the last 10, 15 years in them. 
So they're like, I want to be happy. I want to go here. And I know I've got enough money to see me through to a uh, go up in a puff of smoke or in a hole in the ground. And they simply go, I just find, you know, they're, they're quite happy. And a lot of those guys are content because they, they do keep themselves occupied. Where I find people go wrong, are the, normally the ones are a bit younger. They go on the drink a lot. Um, it's probably in the 50s crowd, probably it'll, probably uh, mid-40s to probably about the 60s, where they drink too much um, because they get bored. Um, I think it's a generational thing between the different age groups where they have different things to preoccupy them. The older guys, I find, do get busy with other stuff they've been doing previously, you know, whatever it is. You know, I know some of the guys were into engineering, so they would be making something or keeping themselves busy with stuff. But a certain group seems to suffer with more issues with alcohol. And I would say that some of the younger guys, well, that's right, it went through the groups actually, um, they get the, the womanizing issue and often that they get a issue with the drinking on a regular basis, um, it can be majorly um, detrimental to their life in the Philippines. Uh, hi, it's my life in the Philippines just joined us. Hi there, how's it going? But I will say that I find life in the Philippines pretty good when I'm there. Um, I love the Philippines when I'm there, um, but at the same time, I find Spain offers more for the family as a whole. Um, but that's, you know, that's my personal viewpoint. You know, a, I think there's a bigger future for the kids. You know, that's, that's April and the kids. I know here in Spain now that there is pretty good. Um, so, you know, if I killed over and died tomorrow, I know my wife and kids are fine. And that's the main thing. Because one of the things I do think a lot of people don't do enough is make sure that they look after their wife and kids. Um, I've seen some horrible things happen in the Philippines over the years, uh, down to the fact that the, the money's died with some of these guys. Um, you, you know, oh, I left the house. And they go, okay, but they're having to sell the house because they can't afford to maintain it. It's too big to live in, etc. Or the family's got involved and they're, just destroyed everything. It's um, it's sad when it happens. Um, but I would say, yeah, the plus side, if you're young, do it for the adventure and the experience and getting a better understanding of the world. If you look for a partner, there's lots of women in the Philippines very easily to approach. I think that's another thing these days in the West, a lot of women aren't approachable. And it's not not because, uh, you know, I've, some of the stuff I've seen, I just think, well, why why are they so aggressive with some of these guys? Um, you know, like even in you know, like even in general conversation, I think it gets to the point where some guys simply say, it's not worth my time. I can't be bothered. Um, and, I th and it becomes an easier option to go to the Philippines rather than finding somebody in your own town. Um, but obviously there's a lot of different traits and things going on in the West now. Binge drinking and the horrible side of Western life. Um, I think that has a lot of negative implications, which is why some guys head to the Philippines. Because a lot of the women in the Philippines, although the West is catching up there, um, there's still a lot of traditional values. There's still a lot of people with um, a good moral compass and stuff. I'm not saying that they're all like it. I'm not saying everybody's like it. But the the thing is, from the people I know, the people I spend time with, I know the good people, and I do know there's some nightmare might nightmare people out there. But they're not really too much of an issue for me. I am, um, but. Yeah, I would say for people looking for a partner, Philippines is a great way to find somebody because A, everybody talks to you. It doesn't, doesn't matter who they are, where they are. I've never had anybody refuse to talk to me. If anything, everybody's happy to talk to you. Um, but that's our thing in retirement. If you're retired, 
there's always people there you know even outside your house there's always people who will talk to you there's, there's a lot of engagement in the uk it's not as friendly friendly as it used to be i think some of it's to do with demographics some of it's the way families are no longer in the same town you know where um you know like we all used to be in the family house and then your sister would be living two streets away and all that sort of stuff and now um people are all over the place so that sort of connections changed um and with it also the the neighbors and things like where people used to work at the same factory work at the same mine whatever it is um that sort of disappeared and the longer hours in the uk is also um affecting things so there's a lot of negative stuff that influences day-to-day -day life especially when you get to retirement because you find people hide you know you they're like oh you know old bob next door i, I dread seeing him in the morning because he always wants to chat that's because old bob doesn't see anybody else during the day because you're the last person who gets up for work and goes out and just get go out the door as he's getting his milk from his doorstep and um the end of the day he looks forward to just spending five minutes with you because everybody else has already gone to work you know that's that's the reality if you look at there is always people around doesn't matter what time of day you can always find somebody to talk to if you wanted to and the same with meeting women or whatever always lots of women around so that's that's the positive side i mean the, the downside i would say healthcare you gotta be very careful with um the levels of poverty in the philippines can be quite extreme um if you're not used to it it can affect some people it does affect some people long term as well i i've i mean i i've met people that were shocked you know they didn't expect it to be to the extent the the levels of poverty um but they also couldn't understand why were people were still so happy uh, uh tim rogers matt i've lived in a house in blackpool for close on 15 years i can count on one hand how many chats i've had with them there you go that's what i mean nobody really communicates um it's sort of deteriorated over time you're more likely to talk to people online than you are your own neighbors and that's that's the reality it's just the dynamics change so much over that time i know even within my own family we used to go to my grandmother's house for christmas didn't matter where we were we'd fly in from germany um even out of hebrides wherever and there'd be people at my grandparents from everywhere the whole family would get together now we don't meet up i haven't seen any of my relatives well i've seen my cousin one of my cousins lives here in spain and i've seen his mother um but i i talked to several of my uncles and that on the phone but we don't really commit to meeting up as much as we used to philippines as soon as you arrive there'll be at least 12 people waiting to meet you uh, Tim Rogers, how do you manage to be frugal with your money in the Philippines? Um, I think it, for me, it's more a case of I adapt to my budget. Um, I'm used to adjusting to what money I have. So I work on a project basis. So if I have a specific project, um, then I don't overspend the priorities getting the project finished um if the project starts generating the revenue then i take my foot off the brakes a little bit and spend a little bit more um but yeah it does take a bit of adjusting um but then again i was the same in the uk you know i i would i'm not a fan of debt so for me um i've always been one who liked to get paid in a pay packet because I would separate all my money out for the bills first, and what's left over would either go in savings or buying whatever I wanted. It's like now I want a new um, drone, so that's fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm sitting here. I've got the money to buy it, but I don't want to buy it from the money I've got in the bank. I want to buy it from making some money elsewhere. That that's 
that's me. I'm frugal like that. <laughs> I'd rather make the money elsewhere than actually spend the money I already have. Um, but you have to adjust a little bit to moving out of holiday mode um, because it's very easy to spend um, on things like eating out a lot and getting taxes and all this sort of stuff. When I first moved to the Philippines, went on jeepneys all the time. Um, we we had mainly soy soy sauce, chicken, and uh, white rice for many evenings because uh, we're limiting our expenditure. Uh, because the way way I work it is, you work on what budget you need, which is basically what it's going to cost you for your basic cost of living, um, and then you expand out of that. You know, at the end of the day. You know, because you, you get people argue like, "Oh, I could live, I couldn't live on this or whatever." Um, but at the same time, I think some people forget that you start with a bare minimum, and then you move up. It's like I like having an air conditioned four by four. I like having my motorbike, but do I need them? The answer is no. Top um, <laughs> top, Carly. I haven't eaten so much chicken since moving here to the Philippines. Yeah, I bet you've eaten more pork though. I don't eat that much pork, so uh, so I, for me, I, I'm a chicken. I like eating chicken because it's for me it's the easiest other product besides pork and dried fish. I don't eat that much dried fish. I I, I do eat it just to show I can eat it, but it's not not on my table too much. It's on April's. I think she was eating it this week actually. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I think you adapt to your budget. You have to. Um, and that for me, it starts, like I say, you start with your bare minimum. You, how much is the electric bill? How much is the water bill? How much is the rent? How much is this? Write them all down and that'll give you the figure that you need every month. Then add a little bit extra for that because when you get to the Philippines for the first time, you're gonna need all the stuff like cooking utensils, maybe a, uh, what, uh, what do you call it, fridge freezer, maybe a washing machine. What it, so you've got, the, well, you've got that initial um, uh, Flame 7 balut. Uh, no, I don't need balut either. Um, although I've been invited a few times, it's just not, not my sort of thing. Same as well, one of April's uncles likes the, uh, they, they have the, they, um, what do you call it? I think they fry the chicks. Um, they, they he eats that. I don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, I like I like I like my food to have actually um, been alive a while. I'm gonna at least to become a chicken. <laughs> Two thousand six Crusader says balut parties. Yeah, it's. I haven't been to a balut party. Um, I'm not sure how popular it would be. Here in Spain, I'd probably get hassled off animal rights or something. Uh, I'll back Dave, man up, Matt, go try it once. I don't mind trying it. It's just not something I've thought, mm, you know what, I fancy that. It's just never been on It's never been on my menu. I don't mind eating strange stuff. I've, been there, I've eaten other stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I've eaten also like eating bits of chicken. There's some strange bits of chicken I've eaten. Um, I don't know even know what part because the gizzards and stuff are quite popular in the Philippines, along with the livers and things. And I, for me, I don't know. It's like there was one where I just bit it, and you just felt the thing just like, psh, and it it didn't taste nice. <laughs> Oh, blood stew is no problem for me. Flame 07, how about the blood stew? Blood stew is no problem. Um, in the UK, we have like black pudding. Um, I like spicy stuff. It's, it's the same way with, um, I like sizzling sisig, for example, which is the ears and the cheeks of the pig. Now, I don't eat much pork. I'm not a fan of most pork. I, you know, sizzling sisig and um, bacon. Or, or pretty much it. I don't. I can. I don't. When we go to the fiestas, I don't need any of that. I can't. I, 
it just doesn't look appealing to me um so yeah but blood stew yeah i have no problem with that whatsoever <laughs> bizarrely um but yeah budget wise a budget wise you need to start with your bare minimum and then expand it out because there's a certain level where you can live then you get your comfort level then you get your very comfortable level um so for me i you know i, I mentioned before you know my electric bills being up to twenty thousand pesos uh the re but i think some people forget we're not one house we're two compounds um so my bills are a bit higher because it's more than one building um but we i mean the big the big aircon unit in my place the one and a half horsepower unit um and when i'm working that's full blast it's like walking into a fridge in there <laughs> tim roger says close your windows <laughs> uh ah vbdv what what do you do when your neighbors are burning toxic plastic and the smoke is coming in your window we don't have that um we haven't had any fires there for a few years now because we started getting on the uh the bin route so before that we used to seal the house up um and keep cleaning the filters on the aircon um but yeah the burning rubbish is a problem but since they started doing more um waste collections the the amount of crap has reduced although you still struggle with some people they still fly tip and that really bugs me uh, because they don't need to do it that's the crazy thing and i don't i just don't get it you know they put the rubbish there and it can cause rats it causes mosquitoes which can cause malaria dengue and you go oh my kid's sick and you're like what do you want you know what do you want from me you create this mess you know the, you've got to take some responsibility that when you throw crap everywhere something's going to come back on it it's called cause and effect it's a very basic thing um but yeah rubbish big problem in the philippines i don't know why they're still so obsessed with plastic for everything as well um you know like you go and get some water it's the plastic bag and then like finish it you know like it's in a plastic bag where it's, it's been frozen or whatever they drink it then you just throw the plastic on the floor I said, why are you doing that you know it's not even disposing of it properly it's just like laziness laziness and bad bad basic um housekeeping uh but what can you do i think i mean i think uh things will change over time it's like anywhere it takes time i mean it wasn't long ago well it was a while ago when they were throwing the old um toilet waste out the windows in the uk into the streets so, so yeah it just takes time to develop uh, Tim Rogers, you tried your hand at growing stuff. How effective was that? Um, for me, it, we were doing a bit on the hydroponics. It, I think it's still running. I think it's still, it works. It's just that I got it running and then got sidetracked onto other stuff. But I think it's still running because I think the fish are still in the uh, blue container outside the house. Because we did it with some pipe work where it pumps. We used a uh, water pump from a fish tank to pump the water up to the top of um, some drainage pipe and it sort of zigzagged down you know like one of those uh, games you used to get with the wooden the wooden a piece of the wood with the marble they just sort of like zigzag down click 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 like a bit like that so the water trickled down from the top to the bottom um, using the water the fish waste for um feeding the plants yeah it works it does it does work um but farming it, i think the philippines is one of those places where it's very easy to grow stuff the hard bit is stopping people stealing it uh we've had the entire mango tree stripped we've had the um we have these small apples they've all been stolen before tomatoes stolen uh, peppers stolen <laughs> yeah you just got to be careful but, but 
that I think that's one of the things where a lot of this skill is already there. Most Filipinos are taught this at school at a young age. They know how to do it, but the big problem is stopping people stealing your stuff. Um, because if they did that, then there'd probably be a lot more people grow stuff, which would also include herbs and things which help with health. Uh, like malungai. Malungai is a very, very good thing to put in your tea and stuff and boil it up. Very useful stuff. Um, it's, it's, you'll hear people say that's why people in the mountains live till they're 100. It's because of the malungai, because they have it every day. Uh, 2006 Crusader, don't go into rice. The big boys won't like it. Uh, I think in Cebu, it'll be a bit more difficult um, because there's a cartel there where the majority of the rice comes in from Thailand. Um, I can't remember how many billions of pesos are involved, but I do know uh, one of our relatives is a big rice merchant. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a risky business. Outback Dave, you would think the government would run a campaign to educate people about littering. Australia did that in the 70s called Do It Right and It Worked. They do do it. You'll see ones with the tires, old tires, because the water sits inside the tires and the mosquitoes breed. The advertising campaign is there. People still ignore it. They, there needs to be a complete change of culture in how people deal with stuff because a lot of the problem exists because people only think of their house, their compound, their location. So when they think, you know what, I've got some rubbish, I'll just throw it over the fence. That's the, that's the, the mentality behind it. Um, there's a campaign in Malaysia relating to um, – human waste where people were going because the lack of toilet and they got a map of the village they sort of like got them to draw the map out and then say where do you go and then they drew it all out you know like where people were going to the toilet and they were like they suddenly seeing that like most of the map was covered <laughs> where people were using it as a bathroom um and you're just like Oh, that doesn't look healthy. It's like, yeah, this is why cholera happens. <laughs> and they started putting these toilet systems in. Uh, but it starts with re-educating people because what happened is they started building these toilets for people. And then they started using them for things like goat houses and didn't use them as a toilet. They used them for storage. So you've got to get people to understand the link between disease health and just general cleanliness it's a bit of a nightmare uh tim rogers is it worthwhile having a rice shop yes but it's a difficult one to get into because you've got a most people are already doing it and have been for a long period long period of time um april's uncle if you went into the market in minglanilia um a central market if you go down on the left hand side there's a big rice rice place there that's april's uncle he, he's got a place there he also does a lot of rice to restaurants and stuff as well it's, it's, it's quite he's made a few pesos let's put it that way <laughs> um ed powers one word benjamin plastics is that biodegradable the benjamin plastics i don't know uh, i do think if it's biodegradable it would help certainly needs to be reduced because it's one of the big problems. I think if they reduce the plastics, they reduce some of the waste getting into the rivers, which would then stop the rivers blocking up with all this crap, which would then reduce flooding, which then reduced other risks beyond disease, such as houses getting washed away, because suddenly when there's a big surge of water that's blocked because of all this plastic, and then suddenly it just breaks and it just washes through. Um, Keeping all that clear would be perfect. Uh, but also, I think cleaning up the, the sea and everything else is an important one. Clean up the ocean. But there doesn't seem to be enough change. Some of the malls run these like um, paper day where they'll do papered bags for a day or something. Um, 
I agree with that, but at the same time, I don't think they put enough effort into making it a bigger issue. Uh, uh, Fidelity Questor, they are very selfish, self-centered people that will never change from the better, only for the worse. I think it's just education. I think it changes over time. Um, BBDV is a foreigner in the Philippines, a scammer. I can't say he's scamming. I, all I can say is I do think if anybody had given money for a specific project and he hadn't returned it after that project had not been um, carried out, for me personally, I think it would be ethically should have returned the money. But beyond that, I can't say because I don't do his accounting. I don't know. I see him building stuff, and I do think he's trying to develop the area. But beyond that, I don't know him personally enough to actually say one way or the other. Uh, Outback Dave, you would think that the elite would want more for their country. You would, but at the same time, it's it's the Indian princess story. There was an Indian princess who sat in her palace with everything like draped in gold and everything else. And this guy said to her the one day, how can you live like this with all this poverty just outside your walls? It's like, if you don't like it, don't look over the walls. For a lot of the, the rich, they don't, they don't wander around in amongst it. Um, so they're sort of disconnected. A lot of them are disconnected completely. Um, there is a Filipino billionaire, a friend of mine, he's a professor. He's a professor relating to agriculture. Um, he actually went to Thailand years ago to teach them about rice, when, when the Philippines used to be a major producer. Um, he went to Thailand to teach them about how the Philippines were producing rice, how, they, how things have changed. But there is the, this billionaire guy has a ridiculous amount of land and a lot of the stuff it's just not producing um he's got these fish that he brings in from different countries just to have fish pools for when he's got friends over they've got a lot of people that are elderly there that are employed for like 100 pesos a day um they're like in their 70s or whatever they're all you know they, they've just been kept on because there were something to do with the mother or grandmother or something but they're not paid a lot, but they're just there. Um, but the the point being is they're so disconnected. I don't think they even look at it. It's not an issue for them because they don't get involved in it. They're not they're not the ones that are suffering with the the issues internally. Um, because if you're flying around in a helicopter or whatever and going from A to B, the same way as people that say live in Ayala Mal, uh, the sort of Iala Cebu with the high rises around the mall, they don't even have to go anywhere beyond the bits they see. So they can sort of disconnect themselves. And I do think that happens. But also sometimes I think the problems are so big that it becomes very difficult to change, especially when you've got a lot of corruption in there as well, that you're thrown into the mix. Uh, BBDB, Duterte is on the wrong path. Drug users are a better product of the bad economy. Sorry, drug users are a product of the bad economy. If the economy was better, there would be less drug addicts. He's treating the symptoms, not the root of the problem. I think it was more political um, because as we're seeing now, there is changes going on internally. Um, and he's sitting back a bit more now. And I think because the system's changing, um, it will unravel some of the people that are involved in it at the top. And I think that's that's the bit that's going on now. Um, I will say I think the UK ignores its problems, um, and it's a bit. I mean, the UK is probably a bigger problem in the sense of what goes on there crime-wise, etc. Um, I know dealing with social housing in the UK that the abuse is out of control. It's ignored, it's buried, it's kept out the newspapers. Um, 
so yeah it, but if the economy was better yeah of course there'd be less less uh issues but you also got to bear in mind that the regeneration that's going to be going on in infrastructure and stuff will be gener generating jobs as well so I will say that Duterte is doing it multifold anyway. Yeah, I think he's targeting it in multiple directions. Um, but I think it's too early to judge. It's normally uh, on your last years as a president or something, people look back on what you've done over a period of time. So it's, it's, I think it's still too early to see where things are going and how much change will happen during that time. Um, where are we going on this? We've got, we got, got way off topic there. Um, yeah, but if I was retiring in the Philippines, would it be the place for me? Um, I would say I don't know at these days. The, the healthcare issue is my biggest hang up for the Philippines. If my kids were growing up and doing their own thing um, and April wanted to go back to the Philippines, yeah, I'll go back. Uh, it, it's not an issue to live there, but my main concern is healthcare. Um, finan finances, not a problem. Um, by the time I hit retirement, I would have already increased my pension income significantly. I think that's one of the things, if you do it earlier on, um, you know, if I know, if I knew what I knew now, I would have already been able to do whatever I want. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in a bad position, let's put it that way, but if I knew this 20 years ago, I started things like investments earlier on, um, it would already have been, now I'd be in a position where I'd have a ridiculous amount of money in the bank, retirement-wise. Um, but we all live and learn. It's later on. <laughs> You know, when you're when you're younger, you enjoy things, new cars, partying, all that sort of stuff. And then later on, you think, how much money did I waste on stuff I really didn't need? But hey ho, that's life. You've got to enjoy life while you're young. And as you get older, you get a bit wiser. And then you try and tell people, you know, don't spend all your money every weekend. And they're like, yeah, I've got to do exactly the same as you did. Um. But yeah, I've got no issues with retiring in the Philippines. I do, I do like the fact that everyone communicates a lot to it, with each other. I do like the fact that it's a friendly environment. I do like the fact that it's just generally a good place to be. I, problems that do bug me are road dust and pollution from the vehicles, um, burning the uh, the rubbish as BBDB brought up um, and general housekeeping but I do think some of those things will improve over time because things naturally do as you educate more people it becomes less socially acceptable um, the only thing I, I mean it's like me I wouldn't want to retire in the UK uh, yeah, Ed, Ed Powers agreed. He is keeping me away with his approach and is making me reconsider him retiring there. Yeah, like I said, he's, you've got to give it time anyway. At the moment, everything's still in the air. It's still first year, and he's gone in there with a bang. It's a bit like Trump in the US. He's, he's gone in there with a bang, and then he's had things revolt with the old, uh, um, what do you call it, the flight ban and stuff, and then it's been put back. You know. It, it takes time because you, every time you do something, somebody is trying to undo it. Um, that's just democracy. So you always have the swing of the pendulum backwards and forwards. But I do think it will take time. And I do think with the levels of corruption, it, it does take it, need a bit of a firm fist. But I don't, with the uh, issues relating to the um, violence, it's a difficult one to say because there's, there's over a million illegal guns in the Philippines. Um, never mind the, the number that are legal. So there's a lot of firearms. You can get a gun for, I think it's about, I think it's about 1,500 pesos or something I was offered. Well, um, 
but I've known people that would actually shoot somebody for less than 4,000 pesos. So that's a problem. <laughs> and uh, and it, it's, it is poverty related at the same time. It's, I don't know why somebody would think that, okay, I'll just do that for X amount of money because A, it's not a lot of money, but B, what are they going to do with it? It's not about paying for somebody who's sick or something like that. They're going to drink it. You know, it, it's, it's not doing anything constructive with it. Um, so I do think there's going to be a whole change of re-education, but will it be done in Turkey's time? I don't know. But I think it's just too early to commit to anything. Um, but I, living there, it wouldn't be an issue. And from the people I know that live there, uh, you know, the people I know, they feel safer than before. Um, now, we didn't really have any crime issues where we are, uh, except for the fruit and stuff getting stolen. But that's people in the neighborhood because we people will go through our lot into the lot behind because there's another set of family houses behind ours. Um, but there are people within the community and it's, it'll be kids, you know. Um, but there's no serious crime. You know, it's... Um, I mean, well, we, we've got CCTV all over the place as well, but the there was no real risk, but people feel safer at the moment. Um, the problem you've got to watch with the media is a lot of the media is controlled by the yellows, should we say, um, the Kino side. So a lot of the negative publicity is pushed because its, it's links with ABS, CBN, and others is pretty strong. Um, and at the end of the day, the thing with presidents, they change. And obviously, if you're in a media group that is sponsored by somebody who's currently out, you still know that they're going to be in at some point. So you try to keep everybody happy and sit on the fence. But at the same time, you're going to support those that are most beneficial to you. And that's that's just life. That goes on everywhere. Um, that's media. Very easy to manipulate. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I would still retire in the Philippines uh, if people want to go back. One of the things I will say, the living in Spain, it's got a similar setup to the Philippines compared to the UK. The UK I find quite isolated in many ways. Um, it's... It's all right to work there. I don't mind working there. I don't mind living there. But it's just the fact is, it's not what I call home. It's more like it's more like walking around a supermarket these days to me. You just go in there, do your shopping or whatever. Don't really speak to anybody. Everyone just smiles, and you know, there's not a lot going on. And then you go out the door. You know, that's that's the UK, Spain. Where we are, because we're on the coast, we, the majority of the people in our town are probably 65 plus. Um, they are people here that just potter around, just doing their own thing. Um, but you, I mean, you see all sorts here. Nobody batters an eyelid. There's, I mean, a couple of weeks back, there was um, a couple of uh, gay guys doing their shopping. They're both wearing pink and they had their pink shopping track cart and they were holding hands, dragging the cart and stuff. And like, I noticed it, but you're just like, oh, okay. It's just normal here. The same as you get women in their 60s with going topless. I mean, it's it's a, it's a bit, bit much for my eyesight, but at the same time, Nobody cares. It, it's just a laid back environment. And I think that's one of the things I do like about here. Nobody really bothers anybody, but everyone's friendly. And that's the thing in the Philippines. Most people will not bother each other. You know, if I if I decided I'm going to play music at one o'clock in the morning at full blast, my neighbors wouldn't even care. That, that's, that's the honest thing. They wouldn't care. In Spain, don't care. It's the same, same in the Philippines. They wouldn't care less. Not that I do play at one o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting here doing doing this broadcast at one o'clock in the morning. Um, but I think that's for me. 
that's the other thing when here in spain by the time i come to retirement i've already paid enough for the social security system to have free health care same with the uk paid enough into the system so when you look at that that's a tick in the box because the healthcare in the uk is pretty good the healthcare in spain is on par if not better um i would say it's probably better from my own experience because in the uk i think you have to phone the clinic where my one of my parents between 8 and 11 if you don't get through by 11 o'clock that's it for the day because you can't get an appointment but you can't pre-book an appointment either in spain you can go online book your own appointment and just turn up not a problem um different environment but i the other thing is there's a fair bit of resources here on the coast because a lot of houses and not a lot of people in them um so that's another good thing you sit here looking at it, you go i don't have the dust i don't have this don't have I've got, but here in spain i've got two airports i've got uh two hospitals on the doorstep i've got good schools for the kids you know you, you struggle to say oh i'm going to retire in the philippines because the more you get settled the harder it becomes um especially you know the food as well food food's a major thing for us we love european food not in the sense of only european food but because we're in europe it's it's a bit like bread getting bread of the same quality as we get in spain uh in the philippines it's difficult to do um same with the wine wines with ridic ridiculous amounts of wine here um i think probably car four there's at least 100 probably about 100 different types of wine um kikilai kikilai uh legalize drugs completely and there wouldn't be any drug crime and there is no need to massacre filthy drug criminals um the problem is it's not just a local industry a lot of the stuff goes for export a lot of it funds terrorism so it's not just on the the localized area a lot of it goes out the country as well so you get pressure from other countries on top of that uh ah uh, outback, out, outback dave that restaurant food was great in the last bit have you seen the one on the Alicante channel? There's a new one today. No, the uh, Kikulai, Kikulai, uh, terrorism, come on. No, no, the, you're not talking, you're talking kilos, <laughs> not, not the local street person. Because what happens is they export it. The same with the arms dealing. There's, I mean, there's a British arms dealer shot a while back in the Philippines. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on very quietly in the Philippines. It's uh, like uh, and other countries refusing to legalize drugs is not the Philippines' problem. It becomes a problem if, it's, if the product is coming out of the Philippines. It's a bit like the problem. It's a bit like Colombia is in a major problem at the moment um, relating to re rebel groups and stuff because of the, the, the value of the trade. Um, so it, it's a major thing. And I, that, I mean, the, the, the special forces from, uh, from, the special forces from Western countries operate in, in Mindanao. Um, they are there for a specific reason. Um, but I don't think it would fix the problem. I, I really don't. Um, at the end of the day the economy has its other issues it's a bit like alcohol alcohol is legalized but alcoholism is a major problem in the philippines uh, yeah i don't think they will legalize it though <laughs> and it, it, it wouldn't make the problem disappear it, like i said alcoholism is a problem and it's a growing problem. Binge drinking is a big problem in the UK these days. Um, I don't even know statistics relating to alcohol, alcoholism deaths and, and drug abuse deaths because they probably find that the alcoholism one 
it's probably a bit higher. Yeah, do they keep it go they keep the drug war going for other reasons, personal gain? Yes. Financial gain is an ongoing thing. Um it's it's an industry, always has been. Um yeah, so you see it all over the place because it's to do with contracts and everything else, but there's not a lot we can do about that. Um, but I don't think it would benefit the country to legalize it, uh, not right across the board, let's put it that way. It, I think it would end up with more problems uh, because you end up with a shift from one thing to another. Um, so I don't think it would just disappear and go, it would become un something else. Um, yeah, I think the, but the, I would say mechanization and uh, automation are becoming a big problem these days as well. I believe this year, uh, last year, China increased its automation by 50%, which means more jobs are becoming redundant because machines and technology are taking over. Um, and, and I have heard people in the UK say to me before, people should get used to not working. Well, this is where alcoholism and drug abuse comes in because a lot of people do not connect with self-worth. Self-worth is probably the most important factor in anything relating to human beings. If they have self-worth, then a lot of these problems simply wouldn't exist. Um, Yeah, don't say the Philippines couldn't possibly legalize all drugs because it would cause problems X, Y, Z or whatever. If the reality is that all countries could, they weren't, just won't. I don't think it would fix the problem. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, addiction is a major problem. So legalizing it would not make it disappear. UK has methadone that a, that a lot of uh, people use. It does not stop them taking drugs. They go to the, they get it on the old um, prescription for free. Doesn't stop them being addicts. That's the reality. It doesn't fix the problem. Um, Addiction is not the problem with illegalizing drugs. It would still be a problem. Addiction is, is a problem. <laughs> <coughs> giving, people a, giving people access to something that they're already addicted to would not fix the problem. It didn't fix, fix alcoholism. It didn't, it didn't fix um, the opium problems in China it, it, it doesn't get rid of these problems um, I mean that's that's the whole thing about the the extent of India trading opium for so that the British could get tea it's, it's some, it doesn't fix the problems let's put it that way it won't, won't fix it like I said I think the biggest problem is self-worth if people have stuff to keep them busy keep them occupied and actually have feel of value i think that has a bigger reduction uh crime's a big problem with drugs being illegal i don't think it would help you know the end of the day a lot of the crimes being committed is down to the fact that people need access to their daily hits or whatever so if it's legalized they're still going to need money to buy it even smoking in the uk is expensive to buy cigarettes I don't see them turn around and go, well, making it cheap is going to make it better. It, it, it never works that way. Um, I think it has to be something cultural. Um, for example, drinking in Spain is not a big problem. I, I, but, you know, is it a, does it kill people all the time? It's one of the biggest reasons people get killed on the roads in Spain. Um, UK, they, because they're so strict on it, it's reduced significantly. But in Spain, it's still a problem. But alcohol's cheap, alcohol's legal, easily accessible. Um, so 
I don't think it would benefit uh, you you do know that legalizing drugs would make it cheap yes it would also make it cheap but I'm saying it doesn't fit make it better uh, it would actually increase the market of people that use it so if if it, if it's an, already known to be addictive then you, the market would increase which mean the people that would use it would increase. So if it's highly addictive, then it's not gonna make the problem smaller. It's gonna make it bigger. Uh, there's no downside in legalizing drugs for us. Um, if it gets to the point where it's cheap, easily accessible, highly addictive, and highly destructive uh for example if it's something that uh, causes the breakdown the way people operate you know mentally physically and going to work then eventually it will become a bigger problem than not legalizing it and i think the the problem you've got is it's just one of those industries that there's a lot of money in it from all sides you know um, but also, there's a lot of problems within it. I, yeah, but, so people need to protect it from themselves, ban alcohol uh, to them, go for a prohibition. The problem is, with alcohol, like I said, it is still a problem. It hasn't fixed it by making it cheap and easy to access it. It hasn't solved the issue. Um, prohibition was removing something that was already available so I don't think actually making something um, making some removing something that's already got its own addiction etc is actually going to make it any easier in the same way if you push something more into the market as being acceptable would not reduce it it would increase it but now there are no violent gangs killing each other over alcohol. Um, yeah, but that was uh, that's because it was actually something that was there, then we vote. So it become an industry over that. Um, I think if there were people weren't using alcohol and it was, you know, not a big thing, um, it probably wouldn't have been as big a problem then. I don't think it's um, the addiction level. I think, yeah, the addiction level of alcohol can be just as bad with certain certain types of drugs, but there's a lot more that are a lot more um, addicted. You know, it's much easier to get addicted on some of the stuff. Uh, addiction is a tiny problem compared to all the crime. It's, it escalates from specific groups as well. I mean, it's a, there's certain gr groups in different parts of societies that are affected by different things. Um, there's certain demographics in London, for example, that like to party with their drugs more, but would having the drug access change the way they would commit crimes? Probably not, because it's cultural. Um, yeah, drugs around the crime around drugs affects everyone. Uh, addiction is an individual problem; it affects individuals separately. No, because addiction always affects more than one individual. They always have friends, family, and the people they rob or whatever. Um, so it's never a single person that's involved. This actually affects the, the wider people. Um, so yeah but hey you know if if you think it would fix the world then <laughs> you're welcome to that one I, I don't i don't think it would would improve things let's put it that way um it would certainly move the money in the different directions in the same way like big pharmaceuticals um create m medicines for a left right and center I mean, my personal view, a lot of the medicines I don't take myself. I'm not one for 
taking medication I don't need. But I know that's an entire industry sat there. Um, uh, addicts affect the individual and his family. That's still a way smaller group than society. It would extend into society, though, because everything has an impact somewhere. So it would be in society somewhere. Um, there's no getting away from it because everything has a cause and effect. So it's a, it's a lot more extensive than just one bubble. Um, yeah. I think that um, for retirement, the Philippines is still a good option. Um, but like I said, the problem I get now is living in Spain. You get, I'm getting very comfortable here. Um, but in the same way, there, Spain, uh, the Philippines still offers a lot. You know, for, I do like the, the freedom of driving around and stuff and lots to see and lots to do. Um, but sat here in Spain, we've got the whole of Europe on our doorstep as well, so it does make it difficult to do a comparison. But if I was going with UK or Spain, uh, Philippines, I would definitely go with the Philippines, that, that's without a doubt. Um, but yeah, the, the re main reasons I would want to retire in the Philippines is a, I like the sunshine, b. Um, I like the fact of being able to get out in the open road and travel around. See, obviously, my wife comes from there. We've D, we've already got our setup there, so you know that will continue. Uh, we're still still developing some apartments now, um, but I do like the way there's a family there, a sense of community, and. Generally, it's fairly it's upbeat. You know, I find the UK is a bit grey. A lot of people are very negative all the time. People seem a lot angrier as well. I mean, especially with the Brexit at the moment, that seems to have made people a bit more angry than normal. Uh, stop refusing to be wrong. No, I don't mind. It's not a case of I'm wrong. You'd have to have specific facts that actually said hey we did this in this country for you for it to become factual um that's why it becomes your opinion against my opinion because at the end of the day to, for it to be factual you'd actually have to have some facts <laughs> um but yeah there's calculi calculi um we say about the uh, the drugs and legalization um but the yeah, I think the Philippines is a good option for retirement. It all depends on your setup, what you're looking for, health, etc. If you're suffering with ill health a lot, I think you need to look at what your options are in the Philippines in the sense of if you have some specific things, do you have access to the right medical care? Do you have the, the right cover? You know, have you got insurance and stuff to cover anything? Um, because it can run a build quite quickly. Um, a friend of ours is their medical bill is currently hitting two million pesos um, because their one of their relatives is is on a ventilator and has been for about a year now. Um, so you can run up some pretty big bills in the Philippines if you ain't got some cover there, uh, and that's one of the biggest things with retirement. You've got to be aware of that. Um, but yeah, and if you're just like 30 something and just want a bit of adventure, maybe start a business, maybe want to find a partner, start a family, that's Philippines is a pretty cool place to start. Because one of the things I will say, because you're a Westerner, it's often much easier to make money because you don't need as much money as you would in the West. So in the Philippines, if you can get stuff where you're working online or you commute or start a small business, you can get sustainable quite quickly and without too much trouble. Um, if you like, think a bit out of the box. I and mean, what I mean is if you're used to just having the same job and doing this, and you need to be able to turn around and go, right, 
oh, what's not available in this area? Oh, they, people have to go um, 10 minutes down the road. We have to go 10 minutes down the road for water. Um, is it worth... Is it worth uh, putting in a water station? You know, stuff like stuff like that. So um, there is always opportunities there. It's just finding them. But it is easy to become sustainable. And like Tim was saying earlier, Tim Rogers, about about being frugal when you're first there. That's what I. That's what you do. You start off with keeping your expenditure down. So you can find what to do, where to go, um, how to make a bit of cash. Because at the end of the day, you need to get your money in. Um, because once you get your money flowing, then it will just keep building. Um, but I mean, I hear it a lot here in Spain where people have spent six months wondering what to do in sort of holiday mode. And they can run short quite quickly, but if they'd actually reduced their expenditure early on, then when they had their idea or their epiphany or whatever, they would have the funds to make it happen. Um, and that, that's, I think that's the important bit. You know, if you're gonna, gonna move to a new country, it's worth getting the money together and thinking, what can I do? Yeah, there you go. Albert, Outback Dave says, hospital in Australia are free. Exactly. I've, we've actually got a friend of ours. She actually come back to the Philippines to take her grandparents back to the Philippines, uh, back to Australia. Um, because, you know, people go, you know what, I'm going to buy a, a house and lot for retirement. I'm going to do this. And then what happens is somebody has a stroke or something like that, and they get a bit panicked. So they're thinking, hang on, what happens if that happens when I'm in the Philippines? Here I am, where I am. I've been working here all my life. I paid all my social security or whatever. I've got free healthcare, like, like Australia, UK, and Spain and other countries. If you paid into the system, it's already yours. So those sort of things do change people's mindset over time. Um, because people plan to move to the Philippines, but may then suddenly go, you know what, something happened, and I don't feel that it's going to offer me what I want in retirement if something else happened. So that's one of the things I would say you have to be aware of. If you're going to commit to something, um, I would say commit to something, A, you can afford to lose, um, B, you that if you're going to invest in it, that you're 100%, you want to do it. Um, but also sit there and just weigh up the options. Because a lot of the time I see things go wrong is what I point stuff out to people and they don't want to hear it. And then like months later or a couple of years later, they, they change. Something's happened. They, they've had something go wrong or they've just decided it wasn't the right idea. Because one of the things I will say, the majority of expats I knew back in 2007, 2008, aren't in the Philippines anymore. Most of them have gone. Kikulai, uh, Kukulai, no one should count on free healthcare being there in 10 or 20 years. It's not free healthcare. People have paid for it. This is, you know, it's paid for out of your um, taxes. It's, it's, it's the way the system was set up. Um, so it's, it's going to continue. Uh, the UK is not going to get rid of the NHS. They may privatize sections of it and sell off hospitals and whatever, but the, the system will still, still exist in some form. Um, they, it, they, it, they won't let it collapse. Let's put it that way. It's a bit like the U S system where you have to pay into it. And I'm sure Australia has got the same sort of setup where you have to pay into it when you're working. So yeah, it's, it's not sustainable. Um, financially it's only sustainable if you keep pouring money into it and these systems are set up like that. <laughs> the NHS needs to reduce some of its costs. 
um, but it never talked about reducing. It always wants more money, but they will continue to request more money. And every election, if they there'll be there'll be pushed money in their direction. Uh, the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Yeah, but at the same time, I do think it all depends on how you outsource stuff as well. There's a lot of money already awash in these places. Um, it, I mean, let's put it this way. There's a hospital I was work, uh, involved with uh, relating to the asset surveys. They spent over £100,000 just on a binary clock that nobody can read. Um, they spent, I think it was about at least a hundred thousand pounds on trees that they imported from, I think it was South America somewhere, that are inside the building. Um, so there's over two hundred thousand pounds that it's easy to have not wasted, in my in my opinion. Um, so the, a lot of it does not even go into the healthcare system. A lot of it's consultants, advisors, and everything else. The layers upon layers of the bureaucracy. Um, so you just have to be careful with that sort of stuff in the in these industries because it exists. It, and it's not just the healthcare sector. It's just governments. Governments are naturally bloated out, and the longer you have a government, the more people they add to it. It's, it's just always been like that. Um, it doesn't matter what country it is, it just bloats up over time. Because you have an advisor for an advisor who does the advising. It's like the Brexit. You know, the Brexit at the end of the day, people assume that the MEPs are gonna go. But let's let's be honest, if we think about this, they're gonna need an ex a set of experts to retract from the eu well that's going to be at least 500 people so that's just jobs created there out of thin air and then on top of that the meps will be moved into something else there'll be jobs for quangos and all sorts it's never it never goes to, the only time it ever changes is normally revolution let's put it that way <laughs> it, it, to downsize it would need revolution uh, I don't think at any other time in history has a government reduced by itself. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, yeah, so living in the Philippines, if you're, you know, it's cheaper to start a business, cheaper to get set up. So in your 30 pluses, it's good. Young, 18 plus, I'd say 21 plus, um, it's good. Because um, a lot, to, I think there's, if you're into sports, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get covered by expats, like the uh, the kite surfing and the yachting and other uh, the scuba diving and stuff that goes on a lot in the Philippines. I do know some people that do all three of those, um, but they don't cover it on any videos, that's for sure. Uh, uh, Kikulai, Kikulai, don't you believe there's a problem if you need a revolution to make things better, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that that's the way it is. You know, it, it, it's just that's the way it is. It's not not a case of whether I agree or disagree. It's just a case of it hasn't been downsized in history. Um, it's always bloated up over time. All right. I think we've pretty much covered most of the topics. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, I'm going to head to bed in a minute. It's nearly half past two. Yeah, the way Kukulai says, uh, yes, the way it is, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, it is. But at the same time, I think that's humans. I don't think there's an easy solution for that. It's just the way humans are. Um, I don't think, you know, it's progressively i think the more power people have they may not initially crave it but eventually it gets to that point where things just keep extensively getting bigger and bigger um so they start off with they get a government post then 
if they're going along with the same system, then they help somebody else get a post and they employ a brother or the sister, the wife, whatever. It's like MPs and their wives as secretaries. And then they have their kids on as um, other members of staff. It's just the way it is. Uh, Outback Dave, I had a stroke just over 15 months back and I was so grateful that the hospital was free because I was there for two weeks. MRI, X-ray, X-ray and daily blood could never have been able to afford it. I'll tell you what, Dave, the amount of times I've seen people requesting blood in the Philippines out the expat community because they, they you can actually bank blood in the Philippines. I don't know if they still do it, but they used to. You can actually give blood on a regular basis. And you can bank it. The only problem with that is you've got to guarantee that the hospital that you're at has actually got enough of the blood type you need. Um, but yeah, it's, it is important that healthcare is always covered wherever you are. Um, because it so easily go wrong. It really is. Um, I was talking to my wife earlier about somebody I know that died from something very simple. He, he was in the hospital and he had this infection on his toe. He didn't go in for that. He went in for something completely different. But he picked up this infection on his toe. His toe went black. And then within, I think it was about four months, the, the because he didn't do anything about it, Whatever it was, it actually got into his bloodstream and eventually killed him. Um, and I think that's one of the things I would say about the Philippines is be very aware that things can attack you very aggressively uh, in a short period of time. Um, I had it with dengue and myself. I was like, just fell ill and I couldn't even get out of bed to walk across the room. Um, I was like passing out, going to the bathroom and stuff. But it was only when I went to fix the internet, I was outside looking at an antenna and the, all this panic broke, broke out because I was like, I looked like I was already dead. I was completely white and pale. Um, and then there was like fires burning and stuff to keep all the mosquitoes away and stopping it spreading and stuff like that. Yeah, you just have to be careful. <laughs> um, well, it's not exactly... Kikulai, Kukulai. Well, it's not exactly. It's more like the way psychopaths are. Maybe that's part of the traits. Who knows? I, as um, the end of the day, these things happen. You know, it's just historically, politics moves that way. But things extend and extend. You know, every time you set up a committee or a board or something, it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, that's just governments. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, Dave. You got to be, you got to watch yourself with the the healthcare. And like you're saying, in the, being in Australia and having that healthcare there, not only did they deal with the issue, but also they gave you the backup to make sure you had the MRI, the X-rays, and all the checkups that are related to um making sure you're healthy um because one of the things i don't see too much in the philippines is the aftercare there's people that suffer with um health care issues or uh they're given some medication but the courses are too short um i remember there was a child that had a tb they only gave him one month's supply of medication when he actually needed 12 months. Um, that's some of the problems you've got in the Philippines. You've got to watch as well with the, uh, the strength of the medication, because a lot of it's freely available. It's very easy to get things like morphine and things. Um, it, it's very accessible. Um, it's why you can sometimes get a prescription and just keep taking it back, and nobody even bats as an eyelid. Uh, it's, you know, because like if you if you have a fever and you know what the fever is, um, then you can keep going back with it. You know, like in three months time, you had the same symptoms as you had before. You already know what the medication was. So you can go back with that. Uh, Brian Blade, what I found hard when I was in the Philippines was it seemed everyone was just trying to rip you off for your money. And it's just got so annoying. But how did you deal with this in the end? 
myself, I just tell people straight. You know, I I, I just um, I don't pay kennel price. <laughs> I just refuse. Um, you know, like when people come along in the street or whatever, you just like just tell them to get lost. Uh, it may sound a bit brash or a bit rude, but at the same time, I'm not bugging them. And it, you know, my wife's had people before come in, like pinch you on the elbow and stuff. You just like you know, you have to tell them to get lost. Uh, but generally, I don't really have anybody to rip us off. You know, uh, there's no like overcharging in restaurants. It's the only other one, the, the, probably the only one that would probably try is a taxi driver. And with that, I argue with them the full journey about the cost of the ride, and I won't pay over the odds. Uh, but if they know you're local, then it's normally not a problem. Yeah, Brian Blade, taxi drivers. Yeah, exactly. With that, you just tell them what the price is, because they'll go like, uh, like we're going from uh, the Cebu Airport to Mindanilia. Uh, I don't know how much it is today, but it used to be three three hundred and fifty pesos. And you'll get them go, oh, it's a thousand. You go, no, it's not. It's three fifty. You know, and they're like, no, no, no. I said, look, it's three fifty, and it, they'll argue with you. And I'll just okay, I'll just get a next taxi, and they'll go, they'll they'll come back. They'll say, okay, okay, okay. And I'll give them a tip anyway. It's just that I'm not having somebody whip me off. I'll get, I'll, you know, I don't mind giving them a tip out of choice. I, I just won't have somebody charge, overcharge me. Because the more they do it and the more people accept it, the worse it gets. Um, because if it's Kukulai, Kukulai. By the way, it's like 2 a.m. in Spain now. Do you have these sessions at completely random times? It depends on the day. <laughs> it really does. Um, because I moved the computer system, so it's in the sitting room. So the thing I have is it's too noisy during the day for the kids. So what I do is like tonight, I'm, I was up doing something else on my computer, so I thought I'll just do it now. I would like to do them in the afternoons, but it, it, at the weekends when most people are about, but the kids are kids are up early and I can't do them till the evening. Uh, during the week, there's not really uh, enough people around in the afternoons. So unless I'm doing the stuff on the Spanish stuff, which I'm thinking of doing, but the the times don't really match with the Philippines. But like there, it's in the Philippines, it's it's morning time, so there's more people around. So yeah, but yeah, it's it all depends what I'm doing. You know, if I'm busy with work, like I was on, um, well, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I didn't do much, you know, because I was busy doing other stuff. So yeah, <laughs> it is fairly random. Uh, any other questions? Because I'm going to cut it off there because I've been on a while now. But it's been good having everybody on. Thanks for everybody joining us. Any last questions? Talk, uh, clock's ticking. <laughs> okay, guys, have a great evening. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, Brian, just tell them no. That's it. Just tell them no. <laughs> when, when you get the taxi driver and they go, it's a thousand, you just go, no. Dilly. Dilly. <laughs> it's like, you just tell them. Okay, all right, guys, have a great evening. Oh, well, have a great morning. Take care.